We've been stuck in construction traffic for eight hours now. If we leave our vehicles, we will die. Lauren is in the Honda Accord right behind my truck with our two cats, but I can't get out and see her. The last guy who got out was shot in the legs and then run over by a tank. We set out yesterday from Gainesville, Florida, where Lauren had recently graduated from law school. We were moving to my home state of Maine to start a permanent life together. The drive was beautiful most of the way, and Lauren and I spent a lot of time on speakerphone with each other to comment on it. A couple of times we passed through rain, and once a really wild thunderstorm that lit up the whole sky for miles. Then, about 8 hours ago, we hit a traffic jam on I-95 just outside of Lewiston, Maine. I took a look at the navigation thing on my phone, but it didn't show any red areas of heavy delay. It also had some trouble showing my exact location, though, so I lit a cigarette and figured it would just be a few minutes. After about 15 minutes, I called Lauren. How's it going back there? I asked. In the background, I could hear the cats going nuts. Not great, said Lauren. Do you hear Hanky and Hattie howling? They started up as soon as we stopped. What's going on? Must be an accident that just happened. My phone usually gives a heads up if there's planned construction or something. I heard one of the cats hiss while the other one yelled. I'm so tired, said Lauren. I know, me too. Let's stop and get something to eat once we're through, yeah. Okay, well right, love you, sorry about the cats. Love you, said Lauren. I hung up and tried to get something on the radio. I have a base model 2006 Toyota Tundra, so no aux jack, and the CD player had broken years ago. During the entire trip, I had been at the mercy of radio stations, and for the most part, they didn't do much for me other than create a general atmosphere of annoyance. Now, though, I couldn't even keep the radio on. What wasn't warbling static was some kind of distorted robotic voice reading off a list of numbers and random words strung together. Across the whole radio band, same thing. I couldn't take it so I shut it off. I picked my phone back up and went to check Twitter. All I got was that game where you have to jump the dinosaur over cacti faster and faster and then it gets dark out and the birds come. No internet. Finally, Twitter did half load, so there was some intermittent reception there, barely. After a half hour had passed, I started to get antsy, and so did everyone else. People were sticking their heads out the window to try to see what was going on, but it was no use. The line of cars seemed endless. A few people got out of their vehicles to try to get a better look. I got out too and started walking to Lauren's car. When I was halfway there, a voice cut into the air. It sounded like someone shouting through a bullhorn. Return immediately to your vehicles. No one is permitted to be outside. This is your only warning. If you do not heed it, there will be severe consequences. What the fuck is going on? Some guy shouted in a thick Boston accent. He was standing a few car lengths in front of me. An instant later, he was down on the ground, not moving. I didn't see what happened exactly, but that was enough to make me to hustle back to my truck. I tried calling Lauren again. When she answered all that I could hear were broken flashes of the cat screaming and Lauren sounding scared and begging to know what was happening. I don't know, I said, not sure that she could hear it. Maybe they're searching for a criminal or something. I don't know. Then we were disconnected. A minute later, an ambulance was wailing its way down the right hand shoulder. It stopped just past my truck, and two EMTs jumped out of the back. They closed the doors behind them, but I saw that there was somebody else in there. Somebody dressed in riot gear, holding a big gun. The EMTs dragged the guy with the Boston accent by the arms over to the ambulance. They opened the doors and sort of tossed him in, and then followed behind. I saw the riot gear person again for a second, and then the doors slammed shut and the ambulance sped off down the shoulder out of sight. Somebody four cars ahead of me got the idea to follow the ambulance out of there. I watched as a red Hyundai Sonata with a New Jersey license plate tore into the shoulder lane and sped after the ambulance. I tried calling Lauren to ask her if she thought we should try it too. It was a balsy move for sure, but she had sounded at the end of her rope stuck in there with our wailing cats, so I thought she might be willing to give it a shot. This time, the call didn't even go through. I was getting ready to try calling again when I heard this loud blast. A puff of smoke blossomed somewhere up ahead, and all of a sudden, there were chunks of a car flying through the air. A red car, very likely a red Hyundai Sonata. As I watched a flaming tire roll to a stop against the highway divider, I decided not to replicate New Jersey's maneuver. I heard the blast of a horn behind me, and looked in the rear view to see that Lauren had her arm out the window, moving her hand around in a circle. Finally, it hit me that she was telling me to roll down my window, so that's what I did. Can you hear me? She shouted. I can. I could even hear the cats. They sounded really freaked out. What is happening? She asked. I don't know baby. I think we're in some kind of military lockdown maybe. I think we have to just sit tight here. Can you throw me a bottle? Asked Lauren. What? A bottle? Like Gatorade or something? I know that you've probably got 10 of them in your front seat. It was true. Not 10 exactly, but close enough. I just threw all of my trash on the seat of my truck until it started overflowing, whereas Lauren kept her car clean. What are you going to do with the bottle? I asked. Not something I want to shout out for the whole world to hear. Said Lauren. Let's just say we've been here a while and I don't think we're coming to a rest stop soon enough. Finally, I understood. I reached over and grabbed a bottle. I chucked it out the window, but it was a bad throw and bounced off the hood of Lauren's Honda. I tried again, and this time she caught it. She rolled up her window and in the rearview mirror I watched her fuss around as she presumably tried to pee into the thing. This was when the fleet of massive trucks started rolling in on the southbound side of the highway divide. Some of them had cranes sitting on long flatbeds, and others had big chunks of some kind of metal material. Soon, the southbound side was jammed up with these giant trucks in their hull. Then they started to get to work. What are they doing? Asked Lauren. She'd opened her window back up. Are they? Building a fucking wall. That is exactly what it looked like they were doing. One crane would take a massive chunk of material, and lift it into place either next to, or on top of, another chunk. 
Yes, they're walling us in, I shouted, I checked my phone for the thousandth time, I had a bar, and used it to call 911. A lady answered, what is the address for this emergency? I, uh, I-95 northbound, just before Lewiston, Maine. I forget the exit number we were coming up on. I'm sorry, that's okay. What is the emergency? Well, we're in this weird traffic jam, and people are dying here. Cars are exploding. They're building a wall around us. They're trapping us here. I know that sounds crazy. There was a long silence on the other end. I thought maybe we'd been disconnected. But then I heard her voice again, crystal clear. Sir, I'm going to need you to remain calm and stay in your vehicle. And if you would, roll down your window. Not the driver's side, the passenger's side. W, what? I asked. Then I heard the tapping at my window. There was a lady cop standing there, holding a cell phone up to her ear. My heart jumped up into my throat, and my instinct was to slam my foot on the gas pedal, but there was nowhere to go. I rolled down the window. He reported an emergency. Asked the cop. Everything looks okay to me. We don't discourage anyone from calling emergency services if they truly think that there might be an emergency situation occurring. But everything appears to be perfectly fine here. I will give you the benefit of the doubt this time. But remember that we also very strongly frown upon fraudulent 911 calls. You could be charged for that, sir. It's no joke. Oh, I said, trying to hold it together. I'm sorry about that. I did think that something bad was going on, but now I see that everything is okay. Thanks for checking in. It's no problem at all, sir, said the cop, smiling. And remember, stay in your vehicle. Of course, I said, trying to smile, though I'm sure my face looked like a sweaty pretzel instead. The cop nodded and then walked off down the line of cars. I waited a few minutes and then called out to Lauren. I think we're fucked. I said, I called 911 and that cop that was just here. She's the one who picked up. She said everything's fine. But it's not. Fuck, said Lauren. What do we do? That's when the guy jumped out of his car and made a break for the wooded area to the right of the highway. And that's when they shot him in the legs. I heard him cry out and watched him hit the ground. I heard a loud continuous rumble, interspersed with snaps from the woods. Then I saw the tank. It didn't so much emerge from the woods as it destroyed the woods in its wake. Beyond it, I saw another enormous wall. We were walled in from two sides. And my guess was that we were walled in from four sides. The tank crushed the man like he was a particularly small ant. They are working on the roof now. It's almost done. Once the roof is on, I have a feeling that I won't get any reception at all. Before that happens, I'm hoping for one more spike so that I can get this post out. I don't know if this is on the news or not. I thought it was just a traffic jam, so that's probably how they're playing it off. They probably have rerouted traffic around us by now. I don't know what this is, but there are now dozens of heavily armed people in riot gear going from car to car. Sometimes they drag somebody out and carry them screaming off to what remains of the wooded area where they disappear from sight. They're almost at my truck now. I hope they skip me and Lauren. Oh god, I'm going to tell her that I love her. If this reaches you, I don't know what you can do, but please try to help us.